Mr. Chair, I recommend approval of item 17. Motion to approve. 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 I'm going to invite Director of Nutrition and Wellness, Mark Williams, like to come to the program and talk to us about the brand that you see. Mr. Davis, it's a full house. It's hard to find anybody. It's great to see everyone. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm here to recognize Mr. Davis and his partnership. We went out together and worked with the city grant on Georgia Organics. And so he and I together uh, go to grant, and we were able to obtain five hundred dollars and to go do what, what we wanted to do. And his proposal was to do burning composting with our farmers. And what would you say about that? <laughs> it's been unique. Um, the kids, uh, they really have enjoyed it. I've never tried burning composting. And for those of you that may not be aware of what that is, that is actually allowing worms to do their job. And then naturally taking what they leave behind and helping plants grow. So the kids are learning how to do that in the classroom. Uh, and also watching little critters grow along the way. So um, it's been exciting. Um, been a lot of challenges. Uh, we've tried to grow cilantro with uh, the verba compost and some of them have. So we're in the process of trying to redo that. So kids are learning about that as well. Uh, working in a group from there, do some problem solving and stuff like that. It's a great partnership, bringing our citizens to the citizens as getting the kids involved and seeing where our food comes from. We're tickled to be in the same plant that you work on this office and people as well. It is very important. In addition to the friends, I just want to do a special shout out to the capacity that you're building for our FFA program. I think that was a serious thing that we've worked on with recently with the Coastal Work.
take a little background. The state of Georgia is broken up into three regions and then into six different areas. We are in area one north region. Each area has our own set of officers. This officer team is able to travel across the state um, to serve different career development events, which are competitions that we travel to frequently, um, region and state special events, and the face of the region during their term. Uh, during the 2021-2022 school year, Amy <laughs> Thomas was elected to serve um, as the Area 1 Sentinel, and we found out Tuesday night that she was elected again, but this time as Area 1 Vice President. This is a huge ordeal for her. That's a, um, so we're super <laughs> Thank you. 
the school year. And I've been very thankful for our leadership guidance and support that helps achieve one of the greatest needs in our program is experience. Um, I also wanted to say a special thank you to Ace School <laughs> for her um, enthusiastic support and efforts throughout the season. Um, our soccer parents who diligently served on the Vista Club supported the program in one way or another, whether it's financially organized events, traveling to the away games, um, and just going above and beyond what we needed for our athletes and doing what they needed. To our community members who have supported our program through fundraisers, donations, and attending the games. But finally, I'd like to go ahead and introduce um, the 21 members of the Lake Girls soccer team who are here tonight that I'd like to honor. Um, this 2022 Lady Girls soccer team had a wonderful year. They are here. Some of their accomplishments this season, they had a record of 16 wins and two losses, 11 shutouts. They had an undefeated season. They missed our two North River rivals who played on our schedule this year in New Orleans. They were the winners of the 7 AA Region Championship, and they had an Elite Eight appearance this season. Um, and the coaches told um, they finished fifth, had the fifth ranked team in in the class away ranking. Um, this season, preseason, we had two teammates receive the honor of the class AA All-State team. We had eight teammates receive the honor of the seven AA All-Region team. And so far this season, we've had two seniors sign to play and continue their soccer career at Dalton State and at Young Heroes. Um, finally, we were just notified that three of our seniors were invited and were participating on the Georgia Tennessee All-Star team June 4th at the Red Bulls Soccer Stadium in Chattanooga. But at this time, if I could go ahead and introduce our Lady Girls Soccer Team, and I'll start with our freshmen, Natalie Bottengino, um, Ashley Amaro Pimpesino, <laughs> Isabel Espinosa Garcia, Alexandria Foster, Sadie Thomas, Karma Eaton, Allie Tubble, Caroline Young, our sophomores, Stephanie Turk and Emma Richardson, our juniors, Madison Fontan, Anna Sosi, Ivy Hyde, and our seniors, our leaders for our team this year, we have Daisy Goebel, Aaliyah Green, Rachel Jessen, Annabelle Willard, Anna McSwain, Taylor Copeland, and Kimberly Sullivan. So I just want to say thank you all again for having us here tonight. We are so proud to have these student athletes with us this evening. Let's give them a round of applause. Hello again. 
uh, at this time, um, and I know you know people weren't aren't sticking around to see all the impressive exciting for me. That's okay. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we have uh, with us tonight a really special individual, us four agents, and with UGA Extension, and uh, Ashley Hoppers. Uh, as you all know, she spoke she spoke at a board meeting uh, <coughs> years ago, and I just want to give kudos to her for all the hard work she she puts into the program, uh, everything that she does to help support the school system and collaborate with the school system. Uh, tons of creative ideas that that come from, from her brain power, uh, just overall, and so uh, she's going to take a few moments here and just. Share some updates with you when it comes to 4-H. And we have Rachel uh, Wasserman as well. I mean, she's just done a phenomenal job with uh, the program, with the project achievement uh, program that you've heard us speak about with the uh, elementary school students uh, uh, taking time to, to present uh, and, and learning how to present and doing that at the elementary level uh, is, is really outstanding. And so I'm, I'm going to stop rambling and make sure I just turn it over to them because.
We took a shot at it. Um, all three elementary schools were on board, um, administration, the teachers in the classroom, just everyone was all about it. And we had 140 students volunteer, mind you, to sit in front of their peers for a speech competition. Um, I think that's uh, pretty stellar for a uh, we've never heard of project achievement um, type of situation here. So out of 140 students that competed on the county level, 85 turned out the district, and we had some winners. We had uh, seven first place winners, um, 10 second place, and 14 third place. And these students have never done this before. And we had fourth graders competing with sixth graders and winning. So I think that's pretty compelling. So I'm going to take that momentum and go with it and try something even cooler the next year. So enter our first in-person county project achievement for Man County 4-H. Um, another big vision here, um, UNG Blue Ridge faculty and staff, phenomenal partners. We had a wonderful time there. Um, again, couldn't have been made possible without um, Man County school system leadership, the teachers in the classroom, the volunteers, everyone who helps put this village together and make this possible. And I wish that I had done a wider picture because you could see all the families and students wrapped around the edges of this picture here. We were packed. So um, just a little bit about the numbers. So we had 41 students show up on a Monday night uh, to compete with each other about their projects. Um, and again, just wanted to make sure I mention our partners here because this was my, I have three people in my office, including myself, so we couldn't have pulled this off without the whole village. So thank you, Van County School System teachers, administrators, everyone who supported this. UNG Blue Ridge was truly above and beyond phenomenal. All of our volunteers, my dear, dear Master Gardener Extension volunteers who say yes to me too, too often, um, and also our 4-H uh, team leaders came and assisted as well. So we have some older 4-Hers who made this possible. We moved on to the district. Um, we had 26 kids, so this is in Union County. Uh, we had Rachel Cunningham County included, six or seven, I don't know, Hannibal. Everyone in the Northeast District. Yeah, so Northeast District, lots of folks came and showed up in Blairsville, as you can see here. Um, this is right before the award ceremony. Um, out of those 41 students who competed on the county level, 26 went to the district, and we had winners there as well. Um, extremely proud of these young people. Four first place winners, um, eight second and eight third place winners there. So um, they showed up and competed, did a phenomenal job. Um, just a little bit of um, changing topics here. So we do offer summer camp, just like other organizations do as well. This year we're going to Tidy Island, uh, it's our marine science um, education center. So it's all about fun, meeting students um, and other four ragers from across the state. Um, but also, like we have to, we're extension, we're a research, education, and outreach unit at the University of Georgia, so we're we're gonna learn something at hand. So just kind of want to let you know we'll be taking about 14 students this summer to Tiny Island, um, many of which I don't think have been there before. So again, just kind of opening the world to some of these young people. Um, of course, uh, extension would not be extension without agriculture. So being your agriculture and natural resources agent, I'm gonna fit it in wherever I can. Um, we play well with FFA and the young farmers. We like to send our students to our local um, youth fair competitions, but also across the state. Um, we also have some older 4 Hers who compete in national level competitions as well. So we're, we're still doing livestock on the extension, just like our um, FFA counterparts are. Judging teams is an area where I would very much like to see us grow, but at this point, you know, we really we were kind of stuck with doing poultry. My um, administrative assistant is the poultry judging coach. And so last year, um, we had our first team, took them to the district, they placed fifth overall, they'd never done it before. Um, and then this year, we also um, went to district and, and placed ninth overall in the district. So um, just a little bit about hands-on learning um, and my role with uh, working with you. So I try to fit these opportunities in whenever I can. Um, this particular picture here was, uh, I like to call it a wheat wrangle. Uh, we partnered with the Board of Commissioners and um, tried to refurbish a kind of an out of control landscape there. And I thought it was a really wonderful idea to unleash some high school and middle, middle school students on some plants that wouldn't necessarily have their feelings hurt if they weren't pruning correctly. So, really good for some hands on learning opportunity here, working with the community, building that community service mindset, and learning something along the way. Um, and we also most recently, uh, when we rededicated the 
uh, Daffodil Garden in downtown. We had some students come out again and assist with that project. So trying to combine the hands-on learning opportunities with community service, I feel like that's a, a double victory there. Lastly, um, you know, we're cultural scientists. I want to fit in research whenever I can. So citizen science theory is a big deal. Uh, we have a, the largest pollinator census project in the country. It's getting international recognition. Other states are starting to copy this research project. So um, having our students um, participate in this every single year is extremely compelling to me because they're actually contributing to the body of work in a very, very powerful, meaningful way, and learning how to maybe respect the, the role that some of our icky insects that we might not necessarily think are pretty like a butterfly, understand the role they play. So just those are just a few examples of what Extension 4-H is trying to do to uh, further complement the amazing things that are going on in our school, school system. And I think we had some 4 majors that we were going to um, recognize, and I'm not sure um, if they made it to the journal. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> okay. But I just want to say thank you so much for the support for letting us partner with you. Um, unfortunately, Rachel's term is coming to an end um, at the end of the school year. But uh, I just want to say thank you to you because we could not have done this without. We appreciate this, this the relationship that we have with this organization and this organization for us to be able to So we appreciate you. Good luck. <laughs> thank you. Volunteer. Mr. Chair, next time when we do this, we go to the Um, they also voted to approve their charter allocation for next school year, and 
and discuss a, a recent field trip project challenge to the South Solar Boulevard. And so all of the SGPs are working hard this week is election week. And so on all our campuses, we have parent elections going on. Some campuses do have staff uh, elections going on. And then we have community appointments that happen in the summer as the SGP starts to reorganize for next school year. So do you have any questions? Sir, I'm very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Principal Chair. Absolutely. Anybody have a comment at all? Hey, Mr. Chair, I'm excited to see that. I'm telling you, I haven't followed all this excitement. It's hard to get up here and present. I'm going to tell you, we are truly going to miss Rachel Watson. She brings such excitement and enthusiasm when she comes to the classroom. It's no wonder to me that we would have such participation in the and I would love any time that you go in the classroom, she's there, it's truly engaging. So we're going to wish you back. With that being said, we'll move on to West Bend and Elementary. And again, exciting things have been going on. Um, we've had lots of participation in events and lots of things to celebrate. So first of all, we'll talk about our spelling bee winner. Um, as you can see on the right, we have our fourth and fifth graders that competed in the competition and special athletes have been Owen Thomas for winning the um, for the school and advancing on to the district. We wanted to bring a little fine dining to our students. We um, too, just like we were talking about, many of our students don't get to go outside the walls of Bannon County. They do not have the opportunity to eat in a restaurant, so we wanted to make sure that we brought that opportunity to them. Um, provided them with a candlelight dinner at, for lunch. Um, we also had an orchestra that some of the brass section from the high school that came and played for the students while we ate. And as you can tell, the students took it on and they took it very seriously as you can tell from their attire. Um, a great day and the students loved it. Fitlet Family Night was another exciting thing. Just because we were able to have parents back in the building, I think that's what's bringing the enthusiasm back is we're seeing that normalcy come back and seeing people engaged and involved. Um, as you can see, just things that we could incorporate with fitness and literacy together. So this was our book fair, but we took the time to engage students and parents with some fitness opportunities as well. This is one of the most prized things that I think we've done all year. Um, Mr. Ben Sexton, our music art drama teacher at West Bend, is absolutely phenomenal. The dedication and commitment that he has to the productions that he does is absolutely overwhelming. Um, and the time and effort he puts into it. For this particular production, he had, I think, 70 plus students that were involved in it, um, ranging from kindergarten to fifth grade. He doesn't exclude based on age. Um, he had two separate casts, so he ran through the different um, performances. So two separate casts, built the students, in the students and the parents actually built the set. So it's amazing to see what he did. But I can't do him justice for what he does in the production that he goes through and then the talent that we have at West Bank. So if you'll play. Thank you. 
ready for this upcoming, for next school year, we'll be producing Anna. So we're just excited about the things that he does, and I just want to make sure that he gets the recognition of us and truly be thankful. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Well, it, it truly brings out all the students' personalities. Just like him being able to get up and speak in front of people, to get up and perform in front of this. And Mr. Ben works it out so that any of the elementary schools can come and they can perform. So not only are they performing in front of adults, but also in front of students their age. So it's it's pretty amazing. Um, next, we have cooking with fourth grade. This is exciting. The Charlie card is something that we purchased last year with Sloss Dollars. Um, it is a mobile cooking unit. It has a convection oven. It has its own water source. It shouldn't be can do anything. So Kathy Hamilton, one of our fourth grade teachers, took it upon herself to start using that in her classroom and integrating it with literacy. So the students came up with a different idea and they wanted to cook some recipes and start doing a little cooking show. So they do cooking with fourth grade and they post these videos on YouTube. And the recipes that they do for it are to encourage healthy eating on an economical budget. So they look at different things that they can um, make or cook. They make sure that they incorporate um, Safety, reminding everybody to make sure they have a parent. So we're going to watch just three clips of them because it's really funny watching these three of them. Today we're going to be making tic tac toe pizza. Before you start your uh, recipe, you got to make sure to wash your hands. <laughs> and um, when you use your oven to put your pizzas in, you have to at least have a parent near you. <laughs> Today we're going to be using pepperoni. Uh, mozzarella sticks, pizza sauce, and pizza bread. You can also make a pizza healthier by using other vegetables like zucchini, cucumbers, and squash. Alright, you guys ready to start making your tic tac toe pizza? I think so. Alright. You can tell just by listening to them that they're excited. <laughs> I don't know very much about putting cucumbers on a pizza, but you know. Whatever they want to do, make it healthy. Um, so they're all engaged, and like I said, they do one every month. We also want to give a shout out to the young farmers for bringing participants for the Ag Literacy Day. Just another fun event for our students to get to see the leaders of our county come out and read and participate in that activity. Um, our fourth grade students participated in the Sons of the American Revolution. It's a poster contest that they do annually. We have Samuel Jones in you know, second place for the district, Ellen Morris in the third place for the district, Mr. Elijah Reed, um, that honorable mention for his Kettle Creek poster, and Allie Rose Radaball, honorable mention for Bunker Hill. And Allie Rose was actually one of the singing that was performed earlier. Um, continuing to build those SEHS connections, our cast and crew from the Fiddler production were able to meet with the Thespian troop from the high school where they did some drama activities and some drama skills and practice with them, just talking about how drama competes at the high school. And then the key club came out and um, did an egg hunt with our kindergarten or pre K through second grade. As we want to make sure that we're incorporating STEM in everything that we do, um, we were thinking about the soapbox derby. I know Dr. Watt got a call for me the first soapbox derby back in the fall, apologizing for West Ham did not have a car in there. Um, and I took that to heart. So we immediately, I reached out to Amber Mitchell, our um, STEM teacher, and she had the idea to start working with the students so that they could truly use that in STEM fashion and start designing Pinewood Derby cars. So they designed their Pinewood Derby cars, drew out the plan, and then we sent it to the CTAE construction department where they cut out the cars and the students were able to build those, adding the wheels of the paint, sing them down and design them. They'll then race them and they'll modify them and go through the full process to make sure that they're um, improving their cars to make them faster. And then they'll incorporate that into the Silk Box Derby car next year. Um, 
Um, field trips have become more readily this spring, I guess. Um, fourth grade went to mixed parks instead of ecosystems. Pre-K, along with Blue Ridge and East Bannon, we used to play with the movies. Can only imagine being in the theater that day. Um, second grade went to the planetarium. And fifth grade went back to mixed park and to the bowling alley today. So just lots of exciting things happening there. Earth Day was another great event to have parents back on campus with us. Um, they were so excited to be invited back, even if it was just for a couple of hours. We had everything from rock painting to uh, recycled materials to make pipes, composting, um, working down on the stream, uh, just anything that we could to be outside and incorporating what was quality for the earth. Um, as we were painting the rocks, we focused on the book. Um, there's only one you that we got a little push of these big qualities. So each of the um, students painted a rock and left a positive quote on that that we could put out in our butterfly park. Here's a couple of pictures of our garden and robotics clubs, the garden club cleaning up our nature trail. Somehow the old tire ended up down there. And then they, the picture in the center with all the sticks, that's where they were getting prepared for their plant sale and chip sale that they recently had this Saturday and they were proud to raise twelve hundred dollars to go towards their garden club. So that's exciting. And it's just pictures of all grade levels using the robot board. Just like um, we were talking about earlier with 4-H, this is our 4-H project achievement and the students that participated in the UNG at um, participated at UNG. <coughs> It was amazing to watch those students go up every day. Y'all, they were in a room full of people, wall to wall, adults and students, and they got up there and they just talked like it was nothing. It was amazing because they were choosing to talk about something that they were interested in and something that they were passionate about. So that was a great opportunity. And then again, hats off to 4-H um, for making sure that they were awarded for that. So thank you. Our scientific investigation exhibition was last Thursday. It's been a while, but it wasn't it was just last Thursday. Um, we have several students in fourth and fifth grade that participate in scientific investigative research with Ms. Mitchell and Dr. Line. They get to again research anything that they're interested in. They bring that and then they figure out how they can research it or something that they want to know about it. I think the one that startled me the most was the little guys right here on the um, left. They are testing the um, forward intake of nuts and they're burning them and then what's left, that's how they calculated what the calories were. But they're playing about food big so that was a little scary. <laughs> As they knock the thermometer off the table, they knock the thermometer. I was like, I was panicking and this group can test to that because sometimes they make me a little nervous. Um, last year it was nail guns, so <laughs> you just don't ever know. Um, we also had a hydroponics, and then the guys up in the top right, just to show that you can make this to be anything that you want, they are all baseball players, and they looked at testing bats made out of different types of woods, uh, different types of woods to see which one would be, I guess, hit the best. So they brought in their little I don't know, somebody does baseball. I mean, I do baseball with my business aspects. You know, you've got the little heating machine to practice the pieces, and they actually developed this test so that they could test all the baseballs. Um, it was just really amazing watching them be engaged with it. And then Georgia Public Broadcasting was there videoing this for an upcoming um, documentary that I sent. So it was just an exciting time. <coughs> In reality, this is why we do it all. You can look at the smiles on these kids' faces. That's what makes us do what we do, and that makes our job so rewarding and makes us passionate to make sure the kids are working. Because in all, when everything's said and done, as long as the kids are happy and they're having fun, then we're being successful. Anybody have any questions? Anyway, the next item is uh, actually items 
chair 9, 10, and 11 are all in the league, and they really kind of just flow together. Uh, we really need a good ball and how to do our better. So with all that, we'll get back over to Drew. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome. Here I am. <laughs> all right. So uh, as everybody has been talking about, you know, it's kind of been a theme of the meeting, really, uh, already with, with all of the accolades with the FFA, 4-H, um, a lot of the items that the standard talked about. Uh, we're in a really, really great spot when it comes to hands on learning, project based learning uh, from the ground up at all levels elementary school, middle school, high school. Uh, I'm just kind of, I don't know, I just feel blessed to be the one that gets to stand here and talk about a few of these items. And, uh, the, none of the stuff that I talk about would even remotely be possible without uh, all of our principals allowing it to be possible. And, and uh, encouraging it to, to be possible. So, I, again, I want to brag on see one of our principals on that, that uh, none of what we do in animal learning, budget based learning, and all that, it just wouldn't be possible without them. And for, and for encouraging people. So. so, the first thing here, this is just something from the DOE. Uh, when we talk about STEM and STEAM, uh, just making sure that, that people understand that we're talking about more than just the, that acronym. That really, when you're looking at that, that what STEM and STEAM are all about and what CT is all about. It's, it's basically, I mean, you're looking at the same types of items. You're looking at employability skills, you're looking at uh, project based learning, you're looking at collaboration, uh, looking at rigorous and relative instruction, all of those types of items, interdisciplinary, so I mean, many different, different subjects working together, it all goes together. And so, you know, I want to make sure that we all are, are aware of that. Um, a few updates of what we have coming up. Uh, at the middle school for next school year in 22-23. We will have a computer science and again under Mr. Young leadership and making sure that we really have a great pipeline uh, and that middle school and high school are really connecting. We'll have health care which is uh, going on both those are going wonderfully this year. Uh, we have agriculture still and then with our STEM lab we will tweak it to where it's more of an architecture focus and then we'll have engineering technology and we'll continue to offer entrepreneurship days. Uh, for the high school, we have the following pathways coming up for 22 23, and a lot of these are, of course, the same as what we have, but we have a, a few changes. We have all of our uh, agriculture pathways, carpentry, fine furniture and welding, audio, video, computer science coming back. We're really, really blessed to have that coming back again next year, and the enrollment numbers there are really, really strong. Uh, teaching as a profession. General Medicine, and that's where uh, Mr. King is taking those students and, and doing uh, clinical rotations in the hospital, very real world. Uh, nursing, sports medicine, pharmacy, food and nutrition, engineering, and then work based learning, and then automotive uh, hopes to be fully implemented by 24 25. We already have some elements of automotive going on now. And then finally, on the bottom left, we have an EMT program. That where we partnered finally we were able to come up with some type of way to do this outside of the box thinking. We partnered with Robert Grams uh, and Ben and EMA to allow students to be able to obtain their EMT certificate. But that was very competitive. We, we only get five scholarships available to do that. And so the students had to apply, interview. We were able to, uh, five students are going to start taking part in that. So I can't wait to come back and tell you the outcome there. Pathway um, completers. Uh, as you see, these are our different pathway completers for this school year. Um, our, our agriculture numbers continue to stay very strong. Uh, our healthcare numbers continue to stay very strong. Uh, welding uh, is, is busting at the seams, and those those. Uh, and about uh, when we talk about pathway completers, these are students that have completed all three courses in the same pathway and have completed that third and final course. So there's our our numbers. Uh, CTSO, uh, those are our career and technical student organizations, uh, along with the sponsors that I want to make sure that I give credit to for all their hard work. Uh, we have very strong CTSO numbers right now, and especially if you look at FFA, uh, HOSA, which that's healthcare related, uh, FBLA, Skills USA, so that's your carpentry, welding, uh, TSA, that's your technology based, uh, really, really strong numbers. Uh, that we're really excited about. They've all gone up since the previous year. Um, and then, you know, just some, some recent highlights. Uh, and I can go, I can talk for days about highlights, but just some quick hitters there. And again, giving credit to our principal.
principles. I feel like I'm standing up here and kind of summarizing all the stuff that they talked about throughout the entire school year during their presentations. Uh, but we, we continue to have the Habitat for Humanity Partnership where our carpentry students are building homes for Habitat. Uh, like I mentioned, the clinical rotation, those students get an the world experience, that EMT program that I just mentioned. Uh, having a plasma cutter and a laser cutter both now up there is a complete game changer. So thank you to SWAS for that. Our career fairs, uh, our success with welding competitions, our CTSO competition success, Brave right Home Scholarships. So those are uh, going to our students in the construction industry, but they're, they're heading into the construction industry. And out of 12 scholarships recently, Bannon received eight of the 12, and each of those students received $10,000. So I mean, that's just absolutely phenomenal uh, for, for what's going on with Mr. Flowers and that building program and, and, and what Mr. Stewart has been able to do. And with Mr. Dillbaker, part of the State Department. So um, just great things going on. Uh, we're part of the economic development partnership process with the DOE right now. Uh, more information will come about that in the future. And then Ms. Danner mentioned having those Georgia public broadcasting videos at West Bannon and, and, and in our middle school over hand, hand ball learning and project based learning. There were only a couple handfuls throughout the state. We have three of them right here in Bayonne County. So uh, just really, really great things going on. Project achievements, like I mentioned many times tonight. Kudos to y'all for that again. And then the exploratory classes at, at, at the middle school. Um, I continue to hear things, uh, great things about those uh, that not rehearsed, you know what I'm saying? I mean, just out uh, randomly in public, kids coming up to me, parents coming up to me, talking to me about what great things are going on in those classes. And then uh, for the first time, I believe, ever, heading into next year, we're going to have a, a robotics club and a competitive robotics team at all three of our elementary schools. And again, that goes back to the, just the leadership of those three schools and advocating for, for what's going on in the learning. Uh, last year, at the board meeting at this exact same time last year, I, I, I got to the podium and said that our main goal was going to be able to, to form those intentional connections between the elementary school and CCAE at the middle school and high school. And uh, again, thank you to all the principals for making that that a reality that truly has happened this year in a lot of different ways. So again, I want to say thank y'all uh, for making that happen. And for this year, talking with the middle school, talking with the high school, our primary goal this year for CTAE is to have, is to increase the amount of collaboration that's going on between CTAE teachers and academic teachers. That that will help you know the students show in the math class why that math is important, in the science class why that science is important, so on and so forth. So that's our primary goal. Today. Finally, as we mentioned earlier in our uh, meeting with local board training, our current five-year CTAE graduation rate is 100%. So that just shows you the importance of these programs and what they can do for the kids in terms of uh, allowing them to graduate high school and move on to, to success.
So these are these do not require your approval, but I am required to give you uh, just a list of all the grants that we have applied for. So as you know, we, we provide a video ahead of time. Uh, I know that, that y'all uh, spent time looking at this list, but uh, these are uh, all of the grants to where uh, we, we are applying to receive money from, from, from the state and from federal money to help our CTA program continue to thrive and continue to function. So that, that's the list there. I'm not going to bore you with reading it out, but that, that is the, the list that we have applied for this year. Thank you. The slide is Lots, lots of little, uh, as you know, I signed off on one of them. Lots of little notes and cranes in there to, to deal with. What's the max of my And then here, this is uh, our comprehensive local needs assessment and local application. This does require your approval. Uh, the goals and the action steps, that's what actually requires your approval. So the other document that Mr. Ramsey did not open, that is a Glorious, if he's not supposed to open, <laughs> that is a glorious 67 page document. It's the entire CLNA and local application. And I, again, I know I shared that on the video with, with, with all of you. And that document is there for anyone to look at. Uh, um, and it is the entire uh, process from start to finish. Again, this is our 67 pages. That is not the end. We don't have to stand here and go page for page. Thank goodness. But uh, we have a, a nice summary here, um, and definitely looking at the, the goals and the action steps. So this provided is archived in here. Okay. Yeah. This is one for the when we refer back to the future grants. So we need to put in there for transparency. But it's not necessary to put in a piece of paper. So the first part is the CLNA summary. And what that is, is a comprehensive local needs assessment. And so we rank ourselves based on the data that's given to us, based on data points and specific groups. So right now, here are the categories and, and our rankings. So uh, the four indicators to performance for operational, labor market alignment, exemplary, size scale quality operational, uh, pathway program implementation operational, and then recruitment, retention, professional development, emerging, we'll talk about that in a second, and then equity and access operation. Um, looking at the four indicators of performance, the reason that we're operational and not exemplary has to do with the one at the very bottom. So we're not going to, we're really, we're, we are really not going to fall out of the when it comes to the rest of these categories. But that credential of value, the reason it is so low, um, has to do with COVID 19. This is lagging data. So we did not give the independent pathway assessments during that year of COVID 19. So that is why, and that's what those credentials of value are tied to. So we will see that number jump way up again once we see the data from. Post COVID 19, this is tied to spring of 2020 when we shut everything down. So that's why that's low. And that's across the board of the set. We're not the only one with that low uh, percentage. Uh, labor market alignment. Uh, our program, uh, we did we have that ranking of uh, that rating of exemplary there. So we're blessed to have that. Size, scope, and quality. The only reason we don't have exemplary has to do with just like last year. Um, we, we, the only way you can get exemplary is if every single one of your pathways uh, prepared kids for high skill, high wage, and locally in demand jobs. So we do have uh, career clusters like STEM and then computer science coming back where those are not locally in demand. However, they are massively in demand across the state and across the nation. So that's why we don't see that exemplary category. It's kind of a catch 22. Um, Recruitment, retention, and professional development. The reason we're emerging there is because only 85 to 90 percent of our CTA teaching staff have been in a current role for at least three years. So uh, I can't say that you know most of those new teachers are due, however, to program expansion such as welding, automotive, so on and so forth, and also due to uh, teacher retirement. And so finally, with all that said. We have to develop smart goals based on our data and based on our uh, stakeholder meetings that we have. We meet with a lot of stakeholders from around the business and industry uh, and post-secondary partnerships that we have. So goal one is that by this fall, uh, our school system will provide the high school students with an entrepreneurship framework within all of our CTAE courses and pathways that address the soft skills, 
mobility skill and entrepreneurship skill development within the students. That's a big piece that all of our industry partners say we have to make sure we continue to improve soft skill development and employability skill development. So that's our that's our goal number one. And then our action steps for that goal uh, have to do with, of course, providing the framework. That's that's step one. Uh, step two, providing the necessary lab equipment. Uh, step three is ensuring that we have the opportunity for professional learning with students and without students. So that's a that's a final thing you got to put in there to make sure you can receive funding for both. And then to ensure that we also have uh, the ability to, um, which actually set four says that too, with professional learning. And action step five, making sure that we continue to meet with our economic development and our chamber of commerce. Goal two. Uh, is that we will increase um, the female non-traditional program concentration percentage that continues to be a goal of ours. Uh, that means you know, that's just a, a low data point for us that we want to continue to, to strive to do a better job in. That's like getting more, more females into courses like engineering, welding, uh, construction. That's something that the state would like us to try to do. So we, uh, you know, we would try to do more of that and also to uh, increase our special education student pathway completion rate. Because as we saw before, if we're if we're if our graduation rate is 100 percent then it would make sense that we need to improve that special education program completion rate because that'll help us with special education graduation rate. So it all ties together. Uh, and then our action steps for that again um, looking at recruitment strategies that's step one. Uh, step two participating in CTSOs, continuing to participate there. Step three um, is, and this is, you know, this is a dream of uh, some people in the room to do this eventually, uh, is to hire a, a CTI teacher. Uh, I can go ahead and give a whole other presentation on that some other time. Step four, uh, professional learning opportunity, both with and without students. And then uh, also to uh, add individuals with disabilities and individuals from non traditional job sector job sectors onto our uh, advisory committee and state committees. So non-traditional, uh, the state gives this the guidelines for that. We don't set that. So for instance, so non-traditional pathways for girls are engineering, welding, construction. So non-traditional pathways for boys are uh, the nursing pathway, um, education pathway, those are actually non-traditional for boys. And so with all that said, uh, I only uh, ask for your approval for our updated Perkins 5 plan. Thank you. 
to bring in additional fruits and vegetables to our schools that are not part of a lunch setting. So our elementary students have the opportunity to taste things they may have never tasted before. Sometimes they're really interesting ideas, and they tortillas or kumquats or something different, and they really enjoy it. Uh, and, our, and our ladies enjoy being prepared for them. And we would like to do the same grant again next year, and it's only offered at the elementary level. We also monitor our wellness, our smart snack compliance, and our fundraisers, and we are currently working to complete our triennial assessment, which is a state requirement. And once that is done, we will post that to our website. Some fun facts about our departments. Our schools have 100s on all of their health inspections. We are inspected twice a year, and each time we have scored a perfect score. We have 25 Sir Say certified employees. Most of your restaurants have one, maybe two. We are so proud of our, our ladies and our cafeterias. That is a difficult test, and they have all achieved it. At the end of March, when I was making our presentation, we had not turned in our accounts for April. Um, and so we have sold so far and served so far 159,000 breakfasts, 215,000 lunches, and we are on track to serve a half a million meals to the students of Anne County. So our participation is way up. The green bar is our breakfast participation, and the orange is a, our lunch. And as you can see, over the years, it has come up, it's come down, and right now we are operating in our seamless summer option, and all the meals to all of our students are free, and our community <coughs> has thrived with that opportunity. And we are seeing so many students eat with us, and we are very pleased to serve them. So looking to next year, all indications are that we will operate under the National School Breakfast and Lunch Programs next year. We will come out of this seamless summer option. Free meals will end unless there is a federal change. And those who need assistance with paying for meals, we absolutely will process applications and try to help to get free and reduced meals for our students. And those who are watching and those who are listening, I would encourage everyone to apply. It is absolutely worth your time. It can be done online. And we will send out those forms and we'll put them on our website. It's very easy to do it online. Or you can do it on paper if you prefer. And that will come out in probably the middle to end of July. And of course, all of this is depending on whether or not anything happens in Washington between now and then. So we have new standards next year. Currently, they're called the Transitional Standards for Nutrition, and it requires that we serve 80% whole grain in our lunch rooms next year, and that we reduce our sodium by 10%. And the whole goal of school nutrition when it from its inception was to make sure that students received around one-third of their daily nutrients at school. When looking at what children do eat at home, it was determined that they eat things that may be more high in calories, more dense in fat. And so the idea was that school lunches and breakfasts would have more nutrient-rich content to make sure that students did at least have that opportunity at school. And so there are many things that guide our program that I mean, I catch a lot of slack about the salt. <laughs> I get it. I understand. But there's also a lot of good reasons for why they've done this. And all of those are links, and I really want to be transparent with everyone. This is where it's coming from. This is not my idea. But it is our program, and this is what we need to do. So things that have happened this year that many may not know is that we have had incredible challenges in Bannon County with making sure our students are fed. And our weekly orders are short to 20 to 3 items that are on our list. And our drivers are frustrated for bringing us food because many of them are new to the job. And our distributors have not been able to honor their bid pricing. Our, our, our folks are not able to get to us what they promised to us. But with all of that said, we have worked so well together to make sure that we could provide meals. And that although it wasn't what we ordered, we were able to get something in its place. And I say that because of resilience. We fed students two meals each and every day. We met the meal pattern. 
We were blessed because we are a family and simply our employees are amazing to pull this off. Our future, well, <laughs> we didn't receive a bid when we put our bid out. So for 30 days, our first bid on the Georgia Procurement Registry garnered no interest. And in fact, we found out that we weren't alone. In fact, there are 12 to 13 districts in mostly North Georgia that do not have a big bid for next year. Our distributors say the reason they are not bidding with us is because of labor. They have major labor issues in transportation to our area, the cost of fuel to get to our area, and we have to go by federal and state procurement guidelines. So trying to find a way to feed our students next year has gotten pretty interesting with thought processes. Uh, currently, we do have a bid on the Georgia Procurement Registry, and so it is with Gilmer and Pickens counties. And our link is out on our website for nutrition for anyone who would like to look at it. It links to Pickens County for the holder of the bid. And you can go and see everything we're interested in. If anyone watching is interested, we would certainly be more than happy to have their uh, input with it. You're fine. Good. I appreciate you showing me. Can we go back one? So, uh, the next steps, our slide, on number 10. Dr. Watney and I have reached out to not only our districts, our region, the superintendents. We've reached out to our governor, to Gina. We've reached out to the Southeastern USDA folks. We, we've reached out to those in our state, uh, to Speaker of the House Ralston, and have received a lot of support in, in listening to our concerns. They were unaware. They just didn't know. And we have started looking beyond the state because our program of nutrition is really beyond the state. It is a federal program. It is USDA back. And so today, this morning, I met with Senator Warnock's staff here at the PAC, and we had seven districts who came and met with us. And we have a meeting scheduled for next week with Senator Ossoff's uh, members. And we are slowly working our way up to the voices of Washington to try to help us. We need some relief. I would love to be compliant and serve 80% whole grades next year. I wasn't able to get the grade that we have on our bid now. Um, there are a lot of things that don't work with what's being asked, and we're just looking for solutions, and we're looking for ways to, to find a way to keep our kids fed. And, that's my pledge to you. I will keep our students fed. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'll find a way to do it because, as you all say, every single board meeting is kids first. And it is all about our family. This is our family. And we are in challenging times. Turn on the news. Everyone sees it. And, and be very honest with you, I have not been loved in our community because I didn't want it to be on our family's shoulders. Everyone has enough to worry about. And we've been able to take care of our kids, and I hope so with some grace. And we hope to extend that into next year as well. A lot of opportunities, because I'm looking for good. I'm looking for good to come out of this, and you know, when there are opportunities, we challenge it. And we have an amazing opportunity in front of us. I know we've all had a lot of different conversations. Do y'all have any conversations or questions this evening? We do not. We do not. It would, it would absolutely, uh, the salt restrictions are too great for that. This is an issue of This is what you mentioned Yeah. 
also share a core and common character the way that we shape this communication is going to be essential to solve this issue of both quick, strong leadership of action in Washington as well as going to take to do this because across the state, they will get a they mean food service programs, special rural food service program uh, across the state where they really fall across the contracts that are barely being paid now expire. That's right. And the waivers will start. This is an immediate issue. So we thank you for your approach to the world out of this. So if you can continue to judge in those orders, trying to find substitutes to replace the status and not hear from your dedication to our students. It's just a question. Thank you. Mr. Banner, I would refer to you on the comment made by the question. Okay, thank you. So it takes number 14 facilities and construction updates. Yes, I didn't realize how many pictures from there, so I just want to hush and let Robert uh, uh, scroll through because there isn't much of them on there. He's getting yeah. excited the closer we get. Well, I just can't, can't keep up, Robert. You need to keep going. And uh, uh, like I say, this you know, comes about two or three weeks ago, and uh, uh, most exciting was seeing that ice on this one. So, uh, I don't think so, I can just all the staff votes. Uh, all the seven tiles uh, are about to have to play. Uh, what's missing is like the little strings yeah. over. Yeah. I'm sorry. They will soon be in. Yeah. Uh, where the strings are, that kind of thing, the ceilings, it's like I say, it's trying to have to play. The carpet is down, the baseboards are down. Uh, what we're waiting on now is the LPT, uh, uh, which is in the hallways. Uh, so it, it's really taking the shape. Uh, I'll just start right there because that works. We want to talk to the guys here. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's more quiet. They will be more careful about it. They'll alert. We're not going to make any calls. We have to have some calls. That's the way it's going to go. Don't abide in walls like that. It's a good community factor. I would suggest that people have a good space about week for a week. So perhaps you should use the rest of your time. Very true. Very true. Concrete, we have two. The main entrance to South Development on either side, and that's all the thing that we're lacking. Uh, it, it's amazing you have to uh, order concrete three weeks in advance. So, so that the same supply chain issue nationwide that affects nutrition and that affects us in this project, uh, as explained by the CN and the architect and the business uh, in this meeting. Supply chain is a critical issue. Uh, the big switch that we've been waiting on, that's it to the right. Uh, that's what has been the whole hold up. Uh, so, yeah, that was received two and a half, three weeks ago. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, and it, it is amazing what has happened in the last few weeks since we have power. And uh, uh, so I, you know, I was out this morning and uh, uh, just put the Front door is in. Uh, actually, I said putting it in today. Uh, I don't know if they got the last in or not. And, uh, uh, so you put those closet doors are in. So I hear the turn of the lace and what's in that stuff. You just want to uh, uh, want that notice to be seen. If all goes as planned, uh, probably one more board meeting in this office. And uh, so we will we'll shoot hopefully out a board meeting. I think we're going to still be in July. Yeah.
That's just the side bump center. And then we go to transportation center. Uh, again, a ton of more pictures. So again, I just want to hush. Uh, if you want to talk about any certain picture, um, please do so. We'll have the rest of the floor in there in the back. And at this time, we expect this facility to be done next. Correct. So hopefully, uh, no later than September. Uh, again, most of the way on a switch at the transportation facility. So once that switch is received, then they can start moving things up and get uh, uh, getting all the inspections done because they can't get the inspections to get total power. Doors are not blue. Doors are not blue. The doors are, uh, I, think, I think I've got an outside picture here. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. There's an outside picture. Truly, a, uh, it's going to be our base of the We won't stop on the water, but um, we'll not No, that's that's all on this That's all on the other side of us. Um actually we did have a water line break uh, there at that's a white fleet entrance at the transportation facility, but again the other seat was on it, uh, uh, it actually could have been a whole lot worse. The lights, uh, actually, parking lot. Hopefully, starting on next week, we're waiting on the curve to be, to be finished on the training pad. We're about 80% complete on the curves, but again, they run out of concrete. So, as soon as that curve gets to the end, then John's Bay will come back and finish up the, the base called asphalt. Uh, at that time, then they'll start actually building the final curve. Uh, the top is going to get shot. And there, we're just sort of cleaning up the entrance there of the bus. Close up view of building by better known as Woody's. So, <laughs> <laughs> but again, those pictures are only about a week old, and you'd be surprised how much work is going on in the chair. Very excited to see how they snapped that baby back in there. Absolutely. Go back to the facilities real quick. Uh, not really a whole lot of things going on at school right now, but uh, uh, the Brian and the Max Department, as of this morning, 1,744 uh, reported uh, completed work on it. Uh, that was not included today because it was so early, about 4 o'clock today, so I didn't get to that in. So I'm going to give a shout out to Max. Mr. Wayside, that's a very good question. Uh, um, what we need to do is get a veteran custodian and just have one go take a look at the facilities, the bathrooms, and say it's the houses that we want to do the house and any people who are in there. You could actually probably want to make a, I don't want to make that decision without talking to somebody who's that. Yes, sir. I still reached out the old uh, 
cobalt, uh, some track equipment, uh, uh, and we put out uh, to bid. Uh, we received one bid on one lot, which is a high jump kit for over three hundred dollars. Typically, uh, we would declare the other two items as salvage. Uh, but I talked to Miss Short. Uh, he told me we only have one bid. She says, "Can we do another one?" I said, "Absolutely." So instead of declaring the lot one and the lot three as salvage, I would like to again keep it as surplus, put it back out to bid for the next month, come back and see if we will have somebody work it up. And I put that whole thing on the plan. Yes, sir. Uh, Very brief history. Remember, our first one uh, uh, bid that we put out in March, we only had uh, uh, one person bid on three scoops. We had three scoops that were not uh, uh, were not covered, so we put another rebid back out. Uh, same gentleman, uh, actually, the pinnacle long here, won all six bids on the second bid. Uh, I received a call from the owner this past Monday and says, uh, uh, I mean, he was very, very black, very kind. He said, I guess I'm just done. I'm giving you a 30 day notice. He said, I just can't do it anymore. Uh, so he requested to keep uh, middle school, high school, and ag, uh, which leaves us without three bids east and uh, west as being covered. So I talked to, to Miss Knowles for guidance, uh, and I said, Do I need to rebid this? She says, No, you find somebody to do it. And, uh, so the first person I called was Gary Stanley. Gary Sandy has worked for us in the past, does an amazing job. Uh, he agreed to do Blue Ridge and West uh, for those amounts there. And, and, uh, uh, but he did not want to do East Bay. So started talking to people in this office, started making phone calls, and uh, Austin Blue has a new uh, new company. He's a recent graduate of Manhattan High School. He's a he's agreed to do this for any actually next week approved by tonight. And then uh, Mr. Stanley can't start until June the 1st. So I talked to uh, to the owner of uh, the Long here, and uh, this is approved tonight, releasing him from Blue Ridge and West at the end of March, May 31st, <coughs> releasing Pendleton from East pretty much this weekend, and then awarding Gary for Blue Ridge and West at other dates, and Austin Blue starting next week. And, uh,
It has moved to an online platform, so I don't actually have a hard copy of something that I can show you because I'll simply input the data and then upload it, and then we'll actually see away their decision. Uh, we won't hear back from them until sometime in the fall. Yes, sir. I uh, talked to Tanner, the superintendent on the job, and asked him about, you know, if we have a board meeting on um, July the 4th, we sort of give you that look, and I said to you, yes, sir, no, he's going to be pushing. I said, what about the 21st? I'm going to wait for you. Yes. Why on one week? Of course, no. When Grandma was out, they'd be ready to do our week. He turned it over to us July the 1st, but he won't to commit to the 14th. Because that move will be pushing back. So hopefully, uh, we'll get permission to request that you decide to talk to the board to get a little bit of the structure so that we can have that whole lot more work there. So, so we look forward to what we'd like to do is uh, kind of open up the staff part. So, that's it. That basically, sometime before we talk to the five groups.
you a question and I'll say it. Uh, I'll take the session to the chair. Is that a motion? I'll look so no action was taken during the executive session. While we're while we're calls, I did motion to say to approve the minutes for the 421 2019 executive session. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. A motion and a second. Any discussion? I was approved. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Chair, personnel sheet dated 5 12 22. I'll make sure everybody's. Resignations. Mary E. Beth Thomas, effective 5 All those in favor? Thank you, Resignation of John Travis, tomorrow, effective day 5 
recommendations for substitute teacher. Again, if you don't want to take a look at that, check on the training and potential housing substitute for that nine month Motion. Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Those unanimous. Mr. Chairman. Substitute custodian of probation and education counselor. I'm sure to take the hands. Substitute custodian of the five and three weeks. Motion. Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Those unanimous. Mr. Chairman. We now have a list of summer custodial workers and contemporary or seasonal workers that are in. Students who will work for us effective June 1 to July 27, 2023. Uh, we have a relation to one of the Scarlet Folk who is separate at this time on that reservation for Elijah Fields. So, I hear a motion. Okay. Motion by this motion, motion by Mr. Drew is second. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. And an abstention. Mr. Drew, all those in favor? Four, four, close to one, and no more questions. This is a blind group. Okay. All right, so the rest of them we can take collectively. We're talking about Hayden Manor, Lily Madden, Cole Pittman, Hayden Rose, Kate Sand, Andrew Walker. Recommend them collectively. Here's the real motion. And a second. Okay. All those in favor? Vote your hands. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is superintendent's comments. And uh, what a day. Uh, we can spend for Fannie County today. We had the governor in Newark County, at the University of North Lincoln, for the signing of the budget. And uh, it's a great day in Fannie County. I'd like to recognize we have leadership panel with us earlier. I think the representative has, has gone. We also have NEC representatives here. I'll come to this group representing the NEC. I'd like to thank them for participating as well. Um, all the collaboration that's happened that's benefiting our school system. You know, go back to the library. The day after that fall meeting, the day after our last board meeting. Just a lot of amazing things that happen with the relationships that have been built. Don't take that for granted. Thank you for benefiting the kids. Today's local board training was, uh, was, was nice. Yeah. And, uh, Sarah, I want to thank you for the work to set that up. We really appreciate Justin and Matt Rose being a part of it. Ford, I appreciate you and your ability and willingness to look forward and plan ahead. Darren, got a lot of weight on you, hmm. but I know you can handle it. And you are handling it. And I want to congratulate you and proud of you for what you're doing. And you are going to be a huge part of the future plan in the next several years for the school district. We'll look back on this time right here and we'll look ahead and put your hands to you so much. It's going to be the future of this school system. I'm thankful for you. I appreciate you. The special recognition is not for special. The city and the kids can come in here and so forth. Allison, you did such an excellent job for Jenny. Very passionate. I kind of act like the mother of the company. Sometimes, but not always. It's, uh, it's just amazing that we have more and more things. Ashley Hopkins being presented, uh, Lucas, you know, you really just you see it tying all together. The charge that I believe we can can put up here in the focus and do the programs and do the programs and do the things, and it's helping our kids. Martha. Um, I could be more proud of you. I mean, you're, you're taking on. You, you have taken on the lead among your colleagues in getting something done. And uh, you know, I want to thank Ben Hartson from the of Georgia for getting the word out, getting us in thumb control, and, and, and really multiple times this matter of reference to the paper. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, the Board of the Kids and Pets Association is now going to pick up that story. Um, grassroots is how things get started. Local papers picking this up and spreading the word. And it's about awareness. This wasn't on most superintendent radar two weeks ago. We can do where we're at today in terms of getting something done. Uh, Susan, a lot of work, well underway for the 22 budget. 
I'm thankful that we're in the financial position that we're in, because no matter what happens, we've been preparing for a rainy day. And it looks like that rainy day is on the horizon for us. But uh, through the conservative, strong leadership of this board, we're prepared to we're prepared to weather. And uh, I'm thankful for that. Most of all, right around the corner. Like we're ending with before graduation after they've been from high school. And I want to give a special shout out to the class of 2022. Some amazing men and women in that class. And a part, their, their success, a part of it is from the work of every one of our elementary, middle school, and high school teachers, the staff of those schools, the leadership of our schools. And this Board of Education have all had a part in their success. And I say thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, sitting there kind of reminiscing a little bit and thinking about things. And in one form or another, I've been sitting on the stage since 2007. And uh, to think we've got most likely one more meeting here. The best is yet coming. It's not very long. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You just start to say, I'm just going to ask you to do it. All right. You're in thanks for those dubs. Yeah, I appreciate everybody here. Uh, I went to the FFA bank with middle school. Phenomenal. I am so excited about what FFA is doing in the middle school. I was in the FFA from 64 to 68. I was one of four people who got a fourth degree. I don't remember that since long. I don't remember where we went to Savannah or Augusta. But we had to go way down there. And I remember, let me tell you this, they had an escalator in both days. And an elevator. And then somebody else, I don't remember who it was, we got on the elevator. We just did this, did this, did this. I never got over there. Hey, you're going to get over there. Some people won't see that thing. We got on the escalator. I've been that far out of Blue Ridge. Anyhow, I'm sure so. It was good. I'm glad that the FFA in high school is doing as good as it's doing for the men. And if they have a good, good job, you know, we do know what we're talking about, I, I'm sure. You know. uh, Ms. Ruth, he done a tremendous job. Mr. Danner? Yes. I'm like Mr. Walker. I can't thank you enough. You're a credit for this. Association, and I mean that's all my heart. Uh, there's one other thing that's really next to me, and that's the possibility of children not getting something to eat. I don't know. I don't know Miss Williams. She needs somebody to fight with to come on the hallway. Our children have to have something to eat. And I appreciate this seriously. Well, we got everybody. Mm -hmm. right. I was at the source of the guy at Westtown, like the kids first. That's the kids shooting, too. <laughs> 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 <That's so laughs> well, I, I, I don't think you're out of pain. Appreciate what you did. Appreciate all the elementary principals and senior art. Uh, actually, I'm taken back about four years when I did a candidate forum. And they asked me a question. I don't remember the question, I just remember the answer. Mm -hmm. They said, sometimes um, you give all the accolades to the, you know, but, uh, Mr. Ramsey, the 
commission of granted his benefits in the elementary school. But I remember going by uh, Taco Bell and they were building it in Hawassi. And I saw that big hole and I thought, are they building a pool there? And then I, as I traveled by there several weeks, I saw them build that foundation. And you know what we have? We have a good foundation that supports the roof of the school system. And I don't think a lot of people see it. But being at my age, and I, I know younger parents, but being 57 and taking all those girls to school every day, I got to see that. I got to see the heart. That's a foundation that, that a lot of people don't miss. The younger people just go right past it, but I want to tell you I appreciate you. Thank you so much because you see all these in everybody's hands. And being a businessman, I, I have people walking in my shop that I have 37 years of experience fixing cars and tell me how to fix it from this. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I know, and I, this is not me, this is Steve Harvey. <laughs> you can't Google experience and you can't Google success. Yeah. So what you're doing is success. It's experience. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I think I'll put it on the show that this just stay in my way for a little while. Mr. Andrew, if you want to do that, I would appreciate it. You can do it here. You can let me see your slide. But it's amazing. I was thinking that we were on the first day. I'm not going to ask you this question. Very confident in the children. We all have an especially here with you know, Mr. Manager and the Grayson staff. I do appreciate all that you did, especially the person I love you. You know, you work as well. And I really appreciate it. And that's something that I think I don't know how to do. To be able to do that as a tenant. I don't know if you realize it or not. It's not often to do it. And I appreciate it. That's good. You see me. Thank you.